Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com. In today's video, I'm gonna be looking at Skyloom's brand new version of Luminar. They just released 4.2, which is a free upgrade if you already have it. If you don't have it, you can go to the link in the description below, get a copy, definitely check it out. Now there's a bunch of new features that are found in Luminar 4.2, and we're probably gonna be going through some of those over the next couple of weeks. But the one that I wanna focus on is the AI augmented sky and also the AI sky replacement. Now you've probably seen me use sky replacement before, but you probably are wondering what in the world is AI augmented sky? Well, we're about to find out. All right, so here we are in Luminar, and if you've never used Luminar, it's a photo editing suite which allows you to pretty much do everything all in one program, and instead of having to learn all these very specific tweaks like you might in Photoshop, what Luminar's done is they've made a bunch of different modules and they've made it incredibly easy for the average person just to go through, tweak their files, and come up with a polished final image literally in just five minutes. So in this viewing mode, you can see all the different pictures that I've imported into the software, but I'm gonna go up here into single view mode, and this is gonna allow me to edit each image individually. Now I love shooting kiteboarding, and this is an image I took a long time ago back in Charleston, but check this out. Everything is not quite as it seems. If I come down here to their creative panel and go to AI sky replacement and toggle this off, you can see I really didn't have a great sky the night that I shot this image, but with sky replacement, Luminar makes it really easy to add really any sky that you want in there. So you can see how powerful this is. It would be a nightmare trying to go through and get all these water droplets to layer on top of the sky and to get all these kite lines and everything. This would be a pretty tricky image, but Luminar does it with literally a click of a button. Let me show you how easy it can be with another image. Here is an image that I shot over Central Park looking back down towards Manhattan. And again, I really didn't have the best sky. Let me go ahead and turn this off so you can see what it looked like before. It was just kind of a hazy, typical New York sky. And I love the mood. I was up there at the perfect time of day. I could shoot with a really wide aperture and get all the city lights and street lights and everything turned on. I love this time of day. But as you can see, my sky really doesn't work well with this image. So let me show you what I did here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this whole sky replacement. And I'm gonna come down here to sky selection. Now Skylum has their own sky libraries. If you wanna buy those on their website, I haven't bought them myself, so I don't know exactly how many are included in there, but it's a great way to get a bunch of skies really easily. Of course, you can also import your own skies. And for me, I'm gonna be using images from Mike Kelly's sky library. That's a tutorial that we produced with Mike Kelly. You can find that in the link below. If I come here to load custom sky, and then on my desktop, go over here to skies, and you do have to use JPEGs. We have a sky library full of high-res raw files, but for this instance, I'm gonna just be showing you guys the JPEG versions. And for an image like this, let me see, I want something that's in the blue hour that doesn't have any direct light. I think the image that I really liked was this one here. If I click on this, it's going to import the sky, and as you see, it doesn't look really good where it placed it, so I can use the uh, horizon position and pull it down so that it's gonna be in a more realistic orientation. And once I have this in place, I can use the horizon blending slider to really fine tune exactly how the sky will blend into my scene. Now, if you've ever tried to manually blend skies into a scene, it can be pretty complex. And this is a great example. We have so many buildings with spires. You can see the Empire State Building and the One World Trade Tower back there. This would take a long time to do this manually, but luckily Luminar, I mean, it does such a good job really with just these two sliders right here. If you find that your sky is a little too bright or not bright enough, you can come down here to advanced settings and we can start messing with things like sky exposure, which will either lighten or darken the sky. We can also introduce atmospheric haze, which is gonna clean up the sky or add a little bit of haze depending on if you're in a pristine nature environment or if you're in a urban city like New York. And we can also change the sky temperature. So if your image that you're importing is really warm, but your scene is really cool, you're gonna wanna balance those so that it looks natural and believable. In this case, it's kind of a blue hour, so I'm going to actually make my sky a little bit cooler. And you can see the natural purples and magentas from the original file are now represented in the sky file that I had before. So it's really important to pick an image that already matches your scene. So you're gonna want your sun in the same position as when you shot your photograph. And then you're also going to want the quality of light to be the same. In this case, 
it's kind of an overcast day. I wouldn't want bright sunny skies. I would want kind of an overcast vibe so that it matches the overall scene. Let me show you just a few more files and then we're gonna get into the AI augmented sky, which is one of the most unique features in Luminar 4.2. Now here's an image that I shot in a desert in Dubai, and if you've ever been out in a desert environment and you're trying to shoot late in the day and get all the nice shadows, many times your sky goes pure white. That's just the nature of trying to capture something with a high dynamic range. Now I could come down here in Luminar and come to the Essentials tab, and if I go to AI Enhance and bring back my AI Enhancer, you can see it's trying to bring back some detail in the sky, but there was absolutely no clouds, so there's really not a lot to bring back. So I'm gonna come down here and let's just turn on the sky that I wound up liking. So you can see what I did here just a few minutes ago. And it's just a really simple sky that I dropped in there, and then if I pull up the horizon position, you'll be able to see what this original file looked like. This image was actually taken at a beach, and because the sun is on the right side of the frame, I wanna make sure that matches up perfectly. If it wasn't on the right side, you can just hit this flip sky and watch what it'll do. It'll flip your whole image, which actually looks a little crazy. It almost feels like this could be a dune like at the ocean, but we know that's not accurate because our sun is in two different locations in this image. So I'm going to flip this back. And you know, an image like this with this position looks absolutely ridiculous. But if I start bringing the horizon position down, Something like that looks really natural. And for me, when I travel, I always try to take wide angle shots like this because I like to use them as back plates. And so for an image like this, I might just wanna drop in a really nice sky. This probably isn't an awesome image for like a landscape portfolio. But what I might do is then go into the studio later at a different time, get somebody in a nice outfit that looks like they fit in the scene, shoot them with the same lighting setup, and then I could cut them out and then put them in the scene. So I'm always taking back plates. Here's another image that I shot in, I believe this was at Monument Valley. And while I was at Monument Valley, I thought, oh, I'll take some back plates and I wanna shoot wide and shoot with a shallow depth of field and create some really cool images where I have the ground there and I could have a scene where basically I could put something in it. Or if you saw some of the videos we did previously on our channel, I can actually take the mountains from the background and then put them in a window or just completely change the scene of a studio shot just by adding little elements of images that I've taken over the years. So if you aren't shooting backplates, I'd highly recommend anytime you travel, take some cool images like this because you never know when they'll be useful. Now before I drop a sky into this image, let's go to AI Enhance like we did before. And we can go ahead and bring up the AI Sky Enhancer and see what this does. Let's just crank that all the way to 100. And just like the previous image, there's really not any detail in the sky. It's, it's slightly blown out, but there's no clouds either. If I bring up the AI accent, see what this does. Now this does a really great job of adding some contrast in my entire scene. And with one slider, I'm already at a point where this image pops really well. But of course, I need to replace the sky. So let's come down here to the creative panel. Let's go to AI sky replacement. And let's find a sky to load in here. So what I'm looking for as I go through all of these images from Mike's sky library is I'm looking for an image that has both the same direction of the light, but then also has the same vibe. And so it wouldn't make sense to have some kind of crazy overcast sky because I have hard light in the scene that's hitting the mountaintops. And I don't think I want something that's just a massive crazy sunset. I don't think that would look natural. Right here is actually some images. This looks like it was taken in like the Bahamas or something, but it's just really nice blue skies. So let me try to import this file. And as you can see, the ocean is in the frame, so this makes absolutely no sense. But while the ocean is here, let me just show you what it's doing. It's just adding such a perfect mask all the way around these mountains. And as you saw in some of the images before, some of these masks are easier than others. This one actually would be fairly easy to make yourself, but the beauty with this software is you don't have to make anything at all. So I'm just gonna start bringing the horizon position down until we can get the ocean out of there. It's actually kind of a cool shot to have the ocean. It almost looks believable, but there's no ocean anywhere near Arizona here. So we're gonna keep going down. Maybe around there is pretty good. And if I wanted, because I shot this image at a low depth of field, this is shot, I think, at 2.8. If I zoom in here, you can see my foreground is nice and sharp, but then my background is kind of blurry. I can actually come down here and start to defocus my sky so that it matches the same depth of field. I wouldn't want my clouds super sharp if 
the mountains in the distance are starting to go out of focus. So with sky defocus, I can come in here and start really blurring this. Of course, all the way over to the right is going to be way too much blur, but maybe something around like 10 would give a natural appearance. Might also bring my sky's exposure up just a little bit since the sky would be the brightest thing in the image. I don't want it too dark because I have a lot of highlights here on this back mountain and I don't want my sky to look like it's not as bright as other elements in the scene. Now, if I had a more complex scene, say I actually did shoot somebody in this location and their body was up here in the sky, you can use some of these other settings like close gaps and sky local. And that's going to help you really tweak the mask that Luminar is making automatically. If you have any weird haloing or anything, you're going to be able to tweak that here in the advanced settings. So every time I dive into this software, I'm pretty impressed with the sky replacement. It's one of the coolest features of any piece of software I think I've used in the last year. So if you do a lot of real estate photography and you show up and it's overcast or the lighting is not exactly what the realtor wants, you definitely don't want to go out there and reshoot it. This software can save you a ton of time. But let's go ahead and dive into the AI Augmented Sky because that's one of the newest features that they just released that hasn't been in any previous version. And let's see what we can do with that. So here is another helicopter shot from New York. I'm actually shooting over the Brooklyn Bridge. I absolutely love this image. I'm just waiting and dying to print this large because it's got so much detail. Really cool shot. But if we wanted to do some crazier things, we can actually start to add elements into this image. But let me show you what you can do with the new Augmented Sky module. So if I come down here to the Creative panel, click AI Augmented Sky, they have this Object Selection drop-down menu. And as you can see, you're going to be able to do a lot of things. They have the Aurora Borealis. You can drop in different balloons, birds, clouds, fireworks, moon, mountains, all kinds of crazy stuff. Let me see here. Let's go down to fireworks would be kind of cool. And what it's doing is it's taking a PNG file that's in the database or one that you upload yourself and it's layering it in perfectly but it's using the same masking techniques for the sky that they use in the sky replacement. So if we zoom in here you can see it is perfectly masking out all of the buildings and dropping in these fireworks and when you zoom out it looks pretty compelling. If we hit place object I can pick this up and move it anywhere I want. And without making any masks whatsoever, I could just throw this thing anywhere I want and it's perfectly masking it out in real time. It's pretty amazing. Now, I've only been playing with this for a few days now. They literally just released this, but this is super cool. Let's try some other things here. Let's do a, a Peter Lick technique. Let's come down here. Maybe we'll do the moon. Oh, yeah. Let's spin this around and we can drop it right in there. So of course this moon looks pretty ridiculous and I think everyone will admit that, but I think you can see the power in this software. If you have a bunch of images of say, I don't know, kites and birds and airplanes and helicopters and fireworks, you could have a whole database that you've built and you can really start to manipulate your images and create the fine art that you really want to create without having to do a whole bunch of masks. I mean, to come in here and to start masking out all of these buildings would be pretty time consuming, especially up here on the spire. I mean, that's pretty amazing that this software can do this. Um, see, they have plane. Let's click that. Nope, let's not use the plane. Let's come down here to maybe rainbow. There we go. That's a little bit happier. It's actually St. Patrick's Day today. That makes a lot of sense. So that is augmented sky. Let me come down here to one more image. I actually shot this image for a Puerto Rican photo challenge. This is another frame that I didn't wind up using. But what I do have, I have some pictures of some birds. So let's come down here to object selection. Let's load custom image. Come up here to my desktop and go to birds. Now for this to work in the augmented sky library, you do need PNGs where the backgrounds have been completely erased or you need images that are on pure black because the software is using different blending modes. So here is one that we could do. So load this in here. And if I hit place object, I can click on this, resize my birds, put them anywhere that I want. Now these birds are really high res, so I could actually zoom out and make them much larger. Do something like, something like that's pretty cool. And since the birds are all backlit, these were actually shot at the exact same time that I took this image. There's really not a lot that I need to do here. 
Of course, if you had files that were cooler or warmer than the scene, you would want to warm them up or cool them down. Very, very cool. Let's add, let's see what else we could add in here. Let's go down to mountains. Oh, look at that. That's Fitzroy. That's in Argentina. I actually had this same file here that I was going to try to do something with, but they have that as one of the stock images for their augmented sky. So that's pretty funny. So I wouldn't recommend using this file because everybody knows exactly what that is. But if you wanted to use a more generic mountain or a hill or something, you can really start to become extremely creative by making your own altered landscapes, which I actually think is pretty cool. And it's something I want to experiment more with. I don't know if you guys remember that Foo Fighters record. I think it was called Sonic Highways or something. The cover of the album is a bunch of really unique and memorable uh, buildings from around the United States. And they made this composite image of a city that doesn't exist. I think it's really cool. This software kind of allows you to do that by mixing in these different elements. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's always fun for me to use new software and to try all the latest and greatest things out there. Definitely cool. And I just want to say also, I hope all you guys are doing well out there. If you're just seeing this for the first time, we are currently in the corona pandemic around the world. And uh, it's definitely a scary time, but I'm using this time to sit in the office, play around with some old files, update my website, and do a lot of the other work that sometimes gets neglected as a photographer. So I hope you guys are doing that as well. And I hope you guys are just genuinely doing well because it's kind of crazy. So I'll see you guys soon. If you want to check out fstoppers.com, we have free daily content every day. Also head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our own tutorials and you can check out Mike Kelly's Sky Library. It's not only a tutorial, but you also get 200 license free, royalty free raw files that you can use in any of your work. And if you have a software like this, it could never be easier to drop a sky in, make your clients happy. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this. See you guys soon.